Welcome to the Catholic Retrospective podcast, a podcast from a Catholic perspective of what is being commemorated by many, the 500th anniversary of the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. This is Father Peter Mangum, rector of the Cathedral of St. John Berkman's in Shreveport, Louisiana. The primary goal, the purpose, and hope of the Protestant Reformation was, of course, to reform the Church, to ensure that all were obeying the will of Christ. It is crystal clear from Scripture that Christ's will is unity, that they may be one. So we can say that our disunities come from our own will, not his will. We fervently pray for Christian unity. At the end of each episode of this podcast series, I'll take the opportunity to introduce some extraordinarily beautiful prayers straight from the Roman Missal for Masses dedicated to Christian unity. But before we begin, let me remind you of the webpage for the podcast, which can be found at sjbcathedral.org, as in St. John Berkman's Cathedral, sjbcathedral.org. From there, you will have the opportunity to find my contact information and I certainly welcome your comments and feedback. So we turn to episode one. I've entitled it, The Church, Catholic and Apostolic. On October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther famously nailed his 95 theses against the sale of indulgences on the door of his church in Wittenberg, Germany. This act of protest against a wrongful practice of people within the Catholic Church led to what we can all acknowledge, a firestorm of historical consequences, not the least of which were painful divisions in our Christian faith. As the world prepares to mark the approaching 500th anniversary of the beginning of the Protestant Reformation, I hope to use this unique historical opportunity to discuss the beauty and richness of the Catholic faith. Our Catholic faith itself teaches us to seek unity among all Christians. So the Reformation is not something to be celebrated, but rather to be examined for the lessons it can offer us today. The commemoration of the Reformation that began five centuries ago should give us all cause to reflect, not only upon the temporal history, but also on the eternal church, Catholic and apostolic, established by Jesus Christ two millennia ago. The Son of God established one church by his own authority and empowered the apostles to continue his work on earth in his name. The Nicene Creed, as forged at the councils of Nicaea in 325 and First Constantinople in 381, make this early Christian understanding quite clear to us. When we say we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we're affirming this. The church's historic universality is clear to us even today in a global Catholicism so richly diverse of language, race, and ethnicity. From our earliest beginnings during the ministry of Jesus Christ on earth to today's 1.2 billion Roman Catholics around the world, we have never stopped proclaiming these core beliefs. It's in the Gospel of Matthew that we hear proclaimed for us, And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In these words, Jesus Christ established the church. But don't miss that embedded in the gospel passage is the important and perhaps often overlooked promise as well as a beautiful explanation of the nature of the church that we'll continue exploring in future episodes. With regards to the promise, Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. We understand this to mean that the church was established as an unfailing repository, a rich deposit of absolute truth, standing against anything this world or the netherworld might bring against it. It's eternal everlasting. And this brings us to the second point. Jesus tells us that his church is bound in human time, but simultaneously outside of time, where it exists eternally. 
The Catechism of the Catholic Church says, in a matter-of-fact way, the Church is both visible and spiritual, a hierarchical society, and the mystical body of Christ. She is one, yet formed of two components, human and divine. That is her mystery, which only faith can accept. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, puts forth the eternal link between this world and the next. Let me draw your attention to the fact that the theme of this Catholic retrospective is framed as transcending history within the eyes of faith. We are only able to transcend human history with an eternal perspective, first offered to us in these words that Christ spoke to St. Peter. That phrase, transcending history with the eyes of faith, is not mine. It comes from the Catechism itself, paragraph 770. It's in a section treating the mystery of the church, all under the heading of the church in God's plan. It says, the church is in history, but at the same time she transcends it. It is only with the eyes of faith that one can see her in her visible reality and at the same time in her spiritual reality as bearer of divine life. We have a core dogmatic belief in the Incarnation that God so fully fused his divine nature with human nature in the person of Jesus Christ, that all of creation is imbued with remarkable and unlimited grace. At the center of Jesus' own ministry was reconciliation. God came to reconcile us to him, right? In our call to follow Christ, we are compelled to always seek the healing of broken relationships. So, as we look back upon 500 years since the beginning of the Protestant Reformation, we should pray unceasingly for a restoration of all to the unity and fullness of the church, keeping in mind and heart Christ's own promise of the Gospels before us. Next week, I will explore how we as Catholics should view our own history when balanced in an eternal perspective. What does the Catechism mean when it says that the church transcends history? And how do we see this through the eyes of faith? But to conclude this podcast, I find particularly apropos for us the collect, the opening prayer of the Mass for the Unity of Christians, found in the Roman Missal's collection of texts and Masses and prayers for various needs and occasions. Did you realize the Catholic Church offers Masses, our highest prayer, for the unity of all Christians as it was when Christ founded his Church upon the rock-solid foundation of Peter's Confession of Faith? We can pray that beautiful prayer right now. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Until next week, this is Father Peter Mangum coming to you from the Cathedral of St. John Berkman's. Thanks for listening to the Catholic Retrospective Podcast. <laughs>